One of the worst parts of depression is how it absolutely wrecks our productivity. I don't care how driven you are. I don't care how motivated you are. When you're dealing with symptoms like exhaustion, insomnia, anhedonia, worthlessness, and brain fog, it makes it very, very difficult to get much done. Your available resources, your energy level, your drive shrinks to a tiny fraction of what it is under better circumstances. Unfortunately, this decrease in productivity creates a vicious cycle where because we aren't doing as much as we typically are able to, the feelings of worthlessness, the negative thoughts and beliefs that drive the depressive episode get stronger the longer the episode goes on because we feel like we don't have as much tangible physiological evidence to challenge the thoughts that come with the depression. Depression says, you're worthless, you're doing nothing, you're a lazy piece of crap. And it's harder to counter that when you've hardly been able to do anything for the past week or month or quarter. And it's so easy to end up in this downward spiral of feeling worthless and pathetic and stupid, like you're letting everybody down and like you have no value whatsoever to the world. There are no easy answers to dealing with these thoughts that get louder and louder the longer the episode goes on. I know that being productive might not really even feel that important to you when you're depressed, especially if you get that anhedonia, that feeling of kind of pointlessness and like, why bother? What even is my life? But you do need to try to stay productive when you're depressed to try to prevent the damage it can do to your lifestyle, the damage it can do to your career, your education, your relationships. These things can utterly fall apart during a depressive episode. And although I do not know a 100% foolproof way to prevent that from happening, I do know a tool that you can apply to nearly every part of your life that will dramatically decrease the damage that a depressive episode can do to your functioning, to your future, and to your self-esteem. And that tool is leverage. Now, that might seem like a strange word to use in the context of mental health, but let me explain what I mean to you by that. Leverage basically means you get more out of the same amount of effort. And so the more leverage you have, the more you get out of every action that you take. It's usually a term that we talk about in you know, business or physics or things like that. But leverage is a really, really important thing for you to understand when you struggle with your mental health because your resources deplete when your mental health gets worse. And so if you have a way to get more output out of less work, then you can stay somewhat productive and therefore raise the floor of how bad your feelings and your life in general can get during a depressive episode. Let me give you a quick metaphor to explain what I mean, and then we'll talk specifics. Let's say, for example, you're in the middle of a depressive episode and you need to mow your lawn today. Whether or not that actually gets done is probably going to depend a lot on the tool you have to mow your lawn with. If you have to mow your lawn with a pair of scissors, I know that's ridiculous, but let's just pretend, there's almost a 0% chance you're going to do it, right? Because the amount of time and energy that would take is just ridiculous. It, depending on the size of your yard, that might take you, that might literally take you all day long. So you're not going to have the energy to do that during a depressive episode. You're also probably not going to have the energy to do that not during a depressive depressive episode in that ridiculous scenario. Um, so it's not going to get done, right? If you have one of those real mowers, like the push mower, that still takes a lot of energy. That's still going to be a pretty tall order for someone who's depressed. If you have a sort of, for lack of a better term, like a regular gas mower, just, just your standard mower, now we're getting into a situation where you have a little bit more leverage, right? This, this job that might have taken eight hours with a pair of scissors or two hours with a, a real mower might take you 30 minutes with a more standard gas mower. So maybe even when you're depressed, you might be able to mow under those circumstances. Let's say that you have one of the powered gas mowers where there's a button you can push that actually pushes the wheels for you. And so you're basically just steering. You don't even have to really apply much force. Getting, getting even easier, right? Less and less energy required on your part to get the same output, which is the lawn is mowed. 
If you have a riding mower, maybe it takes you 10 minutes and almost no physical exertion. And the highest amount of leverage you can have in this scenario is if you have a lawn care company and then you literally just have to pick up the phone and say, hey, my lawn needs mowed today. And it takes you almost no energy and probably 30 seconds. So you can see how the amount of leverage we have in those situations is going to be a crucial factor in whether or not this task gets completed while we're in a depressive episode. Now we're going to take that concept and apply it to a lot of the core treatment areas that help us navigate depressive episodes. So let's talk about six different areas you can apply leverage to your life to try to get essential things done even when you're in the middle of a depressive episode. The first one I want to talk to you about, and this so often is the first place I go because it is that important, is nutrition. Being able to continue to nourish your mind during a depressive episode is absolutely critical. However, it is also a very difficult thing to do because cooking can be a lot of work. And then cleaning up afterwards can be a lot of work too. Going to the grocery store can be a lot of work. So it can end up being a very daunting task to give your brain the nutrients it needs to continue functioning as functioning, functioning as close to optimally as possible during a depressive episode. A few techniques I would recommend, not even techniques really, they're just kind of like life tips to maximize your leverage for nutrition during depressive episodes. The biggest one by far, like if you don't already do this and you deal with depression, this is something I would really, really encourage you to think about adding to your life is meal prepping. If you can cook once and get four, six, eight, ten 10 meals out of that, that's a lot of leverage, right? You don't have to put a ton of effort in to get probably close to an entire week's worth of food. Now, the viability of meal prepping does depend a little bit on your willingness to eat the same thing, you know, several times throughout the week. Here's my thing on that. A lot of times when you're depressed, your food tastes like crap anyway. And if it all tastes the same, it might as well all be the same, right? I hope that doesn't sound invalidating, like maybe that's a little bit oversimplified. Um, but why not take advantage of the fact that if you're not enjoying things that much anyway, then the repetition might not bother you as much as it normally does. Also, think about using uh, like grocery pickup or even grocery delivery services. If getting to the store is going to be a big barrier for you to have the things you need to make food or to eat food, cut that part out. Like, you know, say what you want about what happened with COVID. I know COVID ruined a lot of things for quite some time and killed many people, which now makes what I'm about to say sound really insensitive, but I'm still going to say it. Like one good thing that came out of COVID is it's really easy to get groceries now because for a while we couldn't go to the store. And so basically every grocery store figured out a way around that. And now most of them let you just pick up your groceries and order them online. Some of them even deliver them to you for free. So there's no reason to deal with the stress and the grind of, you know, making your list and then bringing your list and checking things off and go to the, just order it. Just like, there's no reason to put yourself through that unless you really enjoy going to the grocery store. Another really crucial habit that tends to fall by the wayside when we're depressed is having any level of physical activity on the regular. I love the gym. I love going to the gym, usually. <laughs> I also know that depending on how you're feeling, how you're functioning, and the state of your depression, sometimes the gym is just too much. Um, sometimes any physical activity is too much. So I know that this one might be a little idealistic. But again, going back to this idea of leverage, you know, if you have to go to the gym to get a workout in, there's so many steps in that, right? There's getting dressed, there's getting your stuff together, there's driving, there's going there, there's driving home, there's showering. It's just, it's a lot. And it, Although I love the community aspect that you get of the gym, as well as just the variety of, you know, equipment and machines you can use and working with a trainer, it's, it's, it can be a hassle. And if you have a simple way that you can get some sort of home workout in, you remove a lot of potential barriers to staying physically active when you're depressed. Now, I am not saying that you need to have a home gym. If you can afford it, awesome. Like, I do think home gyms are a wonderful thing. But something I like to remind people of a lot in therapy is you don't need a gym to work out. You don't have to be on a treadmill. You don't have to be lifting weights. You can do body weight exercises that some person on YouTube guides you through. You can do yoga. You can do stretching. You can do mobility. You don't need one single piece of equipment to get physical activity in. 
if the weather's decent, you can go for a walk. I mean, you, you don't need anything. So if you can find, you know, one or two go-tos that you can do kind of quick and easy, I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to have any equipment. I can just like do this on a whim. You know, it's something I can do in 10 minutes, basically no matter how I'm feeling and get some level of physical activity in. Remember that your brain needs four things. It needs caloric energy, which we just covered. It needs rest, which you'll hopefully get through sleep. And then it needs blood and oxygen. The availability of both blood and oxygen improves when our physical activity improves. So if you can get regular physical activity and do the, do the most friction-free, simplest, easiest way possible, but if you can maintain some level of physical activity during a depressive episode, it will make a massive difference. I guarantee you in the frequency, intensity, and the duration of the episode. So think of high leverage ways to get physical activity in without having to put yourself through, you know, a major strain of having to, you know, go to this class or coordinate with people or drive however long. Just do something quick and easy at home. That's all you need to do. So another thing I think is really important to do during a depressive episode is to still have some level of engagement in things that you enjoy. That can be tricky, too, because we got the anhedonia working against us. We also have the executive dysfunction, so difficulties with focus, concentration, memory, organization. Our brains just feel kind of messy when we're depressed, right? One thing that I really enjoy doing, and I enjoy it on several levels, is reading. I just like to read in general. I also really like learning. These days, I mostly like to read nonfiction because I like to level up my skill sets in various areas. However, I certainly understand that reading when you're depressed can be a very daunting task. If you can even focus long enough to read 15, 20 pages or however long the chapters are, some of the books, you know, clearly aren't written for people who have executive dysfunction. Um, assuming you can even focus long enough to get through some of these chapters during a depressive episode, remembering, and if you're reading nonfiction like I typically do, integrating the information you just read into your lifestyle, tough thing to do. You, you know, I, I can read 10 pages when I'm depressed and be like, I remember the words and and the, and there were periods. And that's pretty much all that I retain. So something that I really enjoy using that gives me a lot of leverage for hobbies and learning during depressive episodes is the sponsor of today's video, Shortform. So Shortform is a company that makes what they call enhanced book summaries. It's kind of like Imagine having a really, really smart friend who read the book with you and took super detailed notes so you didn't have to. It really makes it a lot easier to understand and recall the information you read from some of the best, most helpful nonfiction books out there. So there are there's tons of mental health content on here. There's books about depression. There's books about anxiety. There's books about nutrition. There's books about sleep. I mean, a lot of the stuff we talk about on this channel, you could really learn in a fairly quick period of time through these enhanced book summaries. I did reach out to short form about this video and they were kind enough to provide me with a 20% off discount for all of my subscribers. So if you're interested in checking out short form as a way to maintain some leverage for learning and hobbies during depressive episodes, check out the link in the comments below. The fourth thing that I would encourage you to do to maintain leverage during depressive episodes is to remove and prioritize items from your to-do list. Most of us, when we have an episodic mood disorder, like major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder, build our lives around non-symptomatic days. And so, you know, your, your work schedule, uh, your, your commitments to other things, your, your cleaning schedule, your social plans are all based on you feeling all right. When you hit these depressive episodes, when you hit these lows in your life, you don't have as many resources as you typically do. And so your ability to follow through on commitments is also going to be lower. You probably won't be able to do as much as you can under ideal circumstances. If you still try to do every single thing on your to-do list unfailingly, most likely you're just going to feel like a worthless failure because you're going to have a hard time doing it all. So one of the most important things I encourage people to do during depressive episodes is to really look at like, what are the most essential items on this list? If you think of it like a budget, like a financial budget, a depressive episode is kind of like having a month where your income drops dramatically. You're still going to be able to pay some of your bills, but you're not going to have nearly as much money as you normally do. 
And so you're going to have to make some cuts. If you try to buy everything you normally buy, you're going to run out of money and you might be unable to afford something really essential at the end of the month, like your rent. So when you have less resource, fewer resources, I think is the correct grammar, available, you really need to prioritize and make sure the things that are most valuable are at the forefront so that if they're the only things that get taken care of, you're still going to be at least kind of okay at the end of the day. Prioritize your absolute most important things. Maybe have, you know, if you normally have 10 things on your to-do list when you're not depressed, maybe limit yourself to like three when you are. Make sure they're the actual three most important things hopefully to help you get out of that episode as quickly as possible and get back to living your normal life where you can do more things and enjoy your life again. If you try to do it all, you're probably just going to burn yourself out and that will exacerbate the depressive episode, which is the exact opposite of what we want. Another way that you can use leverage during a depressive episode is to do task stacking, which basically means doing several things at once. So it's different than multitasking. It doesn't mean we're like doing dishes with one hand while doing laundry with the other. I, that probably wouldn't even work. But let's say that you are trying to like listen to an audiobook or listen to a podcast. Maybe you do that while you're doing the laundry. Or maybe you want to go for a walk, but you also know that you need to socialize. You can do both those things at once. Call the friend you were going to see later and say, hey, do you want to go on a walk together? If you need to go to the store and you also want to spend some time with your mom, maybe see if your mom wants to go to the store with you. When you have fewer resources available, if you can combine some of the things you want to get done so that you are tackling multiple tasks at once, that will help you maintain a higher level of functionality and productivity when energy and mental you know, focus and concentration are really at a premium. And the sixth way, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this, I always save the hardest one, at least for me. That I, I always save the hardest one for last. One of the hardest things for me to do, but I know that it's one of the most important things for me to do, especially when I'm dealing with some subpar mental health, is ask for help. It, it, so many of us are just do-it-yourselfers. And I know, believe me, if you're a do-it-yourselfer who hates asking for help, you are my people, okay? So get it. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there's some like sad developmental story that I could trace this back to if I really tried. I don't actually think that's as important as some therapists do. But I really, really just like to be self-sufficient. And I really, really do not like asking other people for help. It just feels gross. I have to do it. Um, I know it's very like untherapisty of me, but I'm just being honest with you guys. That being said, I know that it is tremendously important. Um, when I'm depressed, I can't probably do all my stuff on my own. And so I will ask for help. I will delegate. Um, in some cases, now not everyone has the luxury of doing this, okay? But in some cases, I may even pay for help. Like I mentioned the lawn earlier. Um I sometimes will have a lawn care company mow the lawn for me because, you know, I only have so much time and energy in a day. And it, it you know, that's one that someone else theoretically can do, at least. Um, there's a lot of things that really like it kind of does just fall on me and there's really no one else who can do it. But, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. And if you can afford it, don't be afraid to outsource some of your tasks. Because if it comes down to like either I pay someone to do this or ask my parents or ask a friend or ask my partner to do this, or it's not going to get done and I'm going to beat myself up about the fact that it didn't get done and that's going to spiral my depression and increase my feelings of worthlessness. Well, which of those do you think is better? Like it, neither is easy. I understand that. But it's better to just get some help and just get some support so that you can hopefully, again, raise that floor of just how bad this episode can be or how long it's going to last. Because if you can kind of keep at the most essential parts of your life, whether that's getting stuff done, whether that's enjoying yourself, whether that's staying connected with friends, if you can kind of keep this like bare minimum level of functioning and not let the depression take that from you, it might take a lot of other stuff. But you can keep a few things at your core and say, no, you don't get these. These are mine. No matter how bad it gets, I will not let these things go. I'm going to make sure I'm going to use the leverage I can build up. I'm going to ask for help. And I'm going to make sure that I don't lose these things no matter how bad this gets. That will give you a tremendously powerful weapon in the battle against your depression. So I hope that these tips were helpful. And I hope you consider checking out some of the resources that I suggested. Either way, I will see you next time. Take care.